Hello, Jared Borkowski here from SoundGuitarLessons.com. In this video, we are going to compose melodies, lead guitar melodies, and melodies intended to be sung as a vocal melody over a complete song that is in the key of G minor. So we're writing melodies over a song that is in a minor key. And if you want to see the process of coming up with this whole song structure and all the chord progressions from scratch, that's what my last video was about. So you can go check that out. There's a link in the description to go there, or this video totally stands on its own. If you want to just check out the melody writing part, this will make sense without having seen that video. So we're gonna take each section of the song that we mapped out last time, review the chords, and then talk about how to go about writing melodies over it and come up with something. We're gonna have a full song structure by the end of this video. And I will even throw some lyrics on at the very end just to demonstrate how it can sound as a complete song. So between these two videos, we'll have seen it come from totally from scratch all the way to this end result. We're not gonna talk about lyric writing, but I just threw them on there so it sounds like, so it sounds like a real song. But let's dive into this. Let's go into the intro of this song. And the intro progression that we came up with last time is E flat major seven to B flat major seven, going back and forth. Uh, and then to go into the verse, it's gonna go D seven and then the verse begins with a G minor chord. So the key is G minor, but we're starting with this intro, catchy, major sounding thing that also is the chorus progression. So if I'm on these chords, the way I'm thinking of it is, okay, often, what are just the notes that fit with this, whether it's the chord tones or the scales, and then I, you know, I'm mostly going by feeling and emotion and, and vibe and, and what I want to, what it to, want it to sound like, but I'm never at a loss for finding something that I like or exploring very quickly because of all the technical information that I like to work on and stuff that I've talked about for years on this channel, mapping out scales, mapping out chord tones, improvising over things, understanding the theory, understanding the chords behind things, harmony, tension and release, all that stuff. So on an E flat major chord, this is why I like to improvise because improvising is just composing on the spot. And composing is a little bit like improvising, but you're just choosing something you love and sticking with it. So right away, if I just noodle on stuff that I know works, which is like an E flat major pentatonic scale here, for example, or these notes that are three, five, six of an E flat major chord. Well, I like that a lot. Okay, well, right after that, it switches chords. So I'm definitely thinking chord by chord. Okay, well, this is where composing is really fun because we can be, and actually, if even if your main goal is improvising, composing is an, a fantastic skill to work on because you're gonna start thinking more thematically. And you wanna be thinking with motives or motifs or you know themes, uh, something that is catchy and relatable, something that relates to what was just said, just like when we speak. Uh, you want to make sense compared, you know, in relative to what you started saying until you finish an idea. Even if I may stumble on my words here, you know, trying to do that on the videos. Uh, that's the goal when we have conversations, right? So three, five, six, five, or even if you just like that, okay, then the chord changes. Well, that makes me want to have that same statement again, but in a way that fits better over this chord. Well, this is B flat major seven. So what if I go up? works really great. One, two, three. Okay, this is a chord tone of the chord. This is a chord tone of the chord. This is the two or the nine, very consonant, uh, non-chord tone, but very consonant note. All right, that's gonna work really well. Now I'm not gonna show you it with a backing track until the very end of the song. We'll see how it all comes together with all the layers. But what I like to do on my own, and sometimes I might use a loop pedal, but I like to just sit here and and figure out how to, even with one guitar, check out how it might sound and feel or sing it. I'm not a very comfortable singer um, on the fly, but I'll sit with the guitar and go, um, and maybe play at least the root with it. I'm using like a hybrid technique right now where you could do finger style or you know, try to do that with just the pick, but 
with the fingers works really well so you can skip strings, but that's that idea that we just played with, but playing the root with it every time. Okay, well the next idea I wanted to do, I'll play the B flat root with it. Okay, so now it's... Okay, so we can hear how that might sound. Approximating it with my voice, of course, right? Okay, um, but I don't want to just repeat those two. So let's let's make the idea be something different. After that. Okay, well, it goes back to this chord. So I'm going to go to the root of the chord because we climbed up from here, 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 here. I'm going to go to this note and I'm going to go. Okay, that's just where I wanted it to go. Okay, that's the root of E flat major. So I'm just playing a scale. One, seven, six, five of E flat. Okay, and then that's the three of B flat. Three, two. Okay, so that actually happens to be a melodic sequence or a melodic pattern. And whether we want to improvise or compose, this shows why working on those kinds of things and hearing them and having them in our fingers is so helpful. This is the pattern. So if we can play through the... Then I played a wrong note out of the key there. But if we can play through our scales that way... get our hands, get our fingers lined up, get um, our ears to hear it that way. Those things are very melodic. And when we're working through chord progressions, they're gonna start to come out, whether we're improvising or composing. Well, this is actually this one. Well, that's a pattern too. It's just a little, it's not one I practiced, but check it out. If we think of the pentatonic scale, uh, it, So this is the kind of thing, and this is why I wanted to do these kinds of videos. I know this is different than other videos I've done before, and I want it to be looser like we're sitting here together working on a song or we're in a private lesson together kind of working through options because th that little sidetrack of something to work on is the juice that we get out of this kind of process, the thing that we want to practice that'll give us the most benefit to our musicianship beyond just trying to come up with something that we like. This is what's going to make it easier next time and the next time and the next time and the next time. So I do pause and take my time when I say, oh, well, that's a little melodic sequence. Well, now let me make sure I can play that through the scale or take this opportunity to, you know, get that down and feel that and... Um, kind of add it to my repertoire, if you will, that um, that I'm ready to play through scales or just kind of get to know that better. Um, it's a great excuse to practice it and it's very in line with doing something actually creative. And therefore we're starting with something we actually want to do with music and then saying, oh, this thing came from it that I can practice rather than practicing something and saying, how am I, where am, when am I ever going to use this in music, which is a, a common dilemma, right? So now we have... Da, 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 uh, or maybe da, 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 we can go down a note. Okay, that works quite well. Okay, but in the intro of the song, we actually go to this D7, and this line works perfectly over D7 too. So we have our melodic material for the intro. Bear with me. We're talking, we're in the trenches here and we will see how it all comes together. That's what we're going to use uh, for the intro. And you'll hear it all at the end of the video. We're going to piece it all together, play all you do lead guitar with that as kind of a song signature type thing. So we hear right away at the beginning of the song. Oh, I know what song this is. 
um, once you're familiar with it. And then let's go into the verse where now, of course, we have to write uh, melodic material that should be sung in this case. So I'm again thinking of you know, what what would I play or what are the quote unquote good notes of a G minor chord? Well, obviously we have chord tones. And that's why I have things like my chord tone arpeggio vocabulary pack. It has all the shapes that we need to map out all the chords that we would need to know to improvise over or compose with. So I can see really clearly because I've practiced that stuff. You can download that for free. There's a link in the description to get that chord tone vocabulary pack. Here's the G minor triad chord tones. And around it are the scale notes. And you can go by ear with that or work on your scales. But that's the kind of thing I might come up with right there. Well, the chord changes. And I kind of want to keep it there. This is a cool moment because if we forced ourselves to stay with the chord, the F chord in the chord progression, which is the second chord of the first chord progression, the melody, if we forced ourselves to say, we have to play chord tones because those are the right notes and those are the good notes and, and you, there's no rules. You don't have to do anything. So I feel like doing this. That's just what feels right to me, even though, That note, you know, harmonically could go down there, but if we just keep going with the idea or go with whatever feels right, um, you can play, you know, technically that moment right there is an F major chord with an 11 added, F major add 11. On its own, it's really funky, but during this little moment of the melody just kind of grooving, it works. So it's a reminder to do literally anything you want don't pay attention to rules. All of these good notes and you know things you can practice and map out are just fuel. It's just fodder. It's just something to get inspired by. And to, so we're never at a loss. I'm never at a loss for coming up with something. It just doesn't happen to me. Because I'm lucky that I like to practice all the technical stuff. So I practice it a bunch. I work on the vocabulary. I map it all out. I like to improvise. So then when it comes to writing, I'm like, well, this works, and this works, and this works, and you know, this option works, so let's add a chromatic note. And then it's just a matter of, do I like that or not? And am I going to keep it? Should I change it? Et cetera. The, you know, the fun part. That's the creative process. So the verse goes to F, and then it goes to B major, then it goes to D7, and it does that twice. second time the last chord is going to lead us somewhere else so i like this well i'm very aware of that already being three three two one forgive my singing like i said not very confident with it on the fly but trying to help demonstrate what's going on here three two one b flat uh, major with the three, two, one of that chord, which happens to be exactly what we did already. So all this theory stuff that I can see right away, that that melody line was five, four, flat, three of G minor. And it's three, two, one of B flat major. Okay. It's not right or wrong to see it that way. You can see it or call it whatever you want. Some people are thinking of note names. They're thinking D, C, B flat. I'm not thinking that way at all. But it's not wrong. It's whatever gets us feeling fluent so the creativity can flow and we can have the fun part. Um, so, whoops. I feel like doing that again, and this is very cool because. Digging that for the melody of this, this verse that last chord before it cycles back is D7. And the melody note is this. Whoa. The five is here, five of D. Five of D, this is flat 13 of D. So it's this chord. If you watch the last video, we used that chord and we'll see it in the next section. In this song, we use this exact chord voicing off of G where it's a dominant seventh chord with a flat 13. Well, you can just superimpose anything over anything. So we have a D7 chord and the melody landing on 
that note, it works great. That works great. So here we have... You know, it kind of wants to pull there, but I'm not going to bring it there, just like that on that F chord. Um, let's keep going with it. So I'm just going to repeat that. That's basically just four times of the same melody. And this last chord of the verse is B flat dominant seven. And the melody note is on the root of that. And then we're leading into the pre-chorus. Let's go to that. I know this, you know, might be hard to follow. The point of it is to show how I am thinking through stuff, how detailed it can be, how much, you know, letting go there can be on top of that and how, you know, the process can just unfold if we know all this information and then we trust our creative instinct. You can try to follow exactly what I'm playing, but more, I hope it's interesting to watch it unfold and see it turn into a full song at the end so you can do that for yourself. Um, and again, trust your instincts. And you don't have to know everything. I was, I, I was writing songs before I knew, you know, a ton of the stuff I know now. And so use whatever you have and you do know and just have fun with it. And then keep working on practicing to, um, to, to again, add your fuel, your ammo to that process that will get faster and better. And, you know, you'll get results you like. Uh, you'll get results you like more and you will get those results quicker by practicing all of the uh, practice material and then having a lot of creative time at the same time. So here is the pre-chorus. We just came from B flat dominant seven. Here's the pre-chorus. E flat major seven, G seven, flat 13, C minor, D seven, with a little embellishment thing, and then back to G minor and then flat seven that leads it back again. This is like the busy part of the... So that happens twice for the pre-chorus and then it's gonna go into to a chorus. Okay, so how the heck can you write a melody over that? Okay, so when the harmony is so busy, I like to think of what, and I talk so much about outlining harmony, if we're talking about improvisation or jazz improvisation, and, and I do all that for the sake of the mapping it out, but not because it's better to always play all those notes. I like to sometimes find what's the note, what are a collection of notes that are common between chords that are going out of a key. So like this goes out of the key for a, for a second, this chord here. So, well, what does it have in common with the other notes? Well, it has this note. So that note right there works on the E flat major, okay? And it works on the G7 flat 13, and it works on the C minor, and it could work on the D7, uh, on the, yeah, D7 as well. But let's just think about that. Kind of cool, like a single note as, as things move around it. Um, I have a video where I harmonize one note with 12 different chords and turn a chord progression create a chord progression all about harmonizing that one note. It's actually pretty cool. I'll put a link to that in the description. But uh, let's make a melody here. And then when it goes to D7, let's follow. So. And then let's do this again. We're, we're really using this a lot. The major key, the parallel major key is B flat major. So we were in G minor, but the relative major, I should say, not parallel. Relative major is B flat. And this is three, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two. That's especially in like popular songwriting, the three, two, one is such a catchy spot to kind of go to to say, is there something here I can I can do that's catchy and rhythmic, regardless of what the harmony's doing? Um, so many songs are using that little spot. It's part of the pentatonic scale to find something catchy to do. So I like to come back to that a lot. So now we have um, I like this melody. So three, three, two, one of them. B flat dominant seven. And let's do it again. 
but change it. We could do. I love this. This is one and seven of E flat. One seven, one seven. And then it's flat 13 to five of G. It's flat three to two of C. So it works on all those. And then we'll go again. So. Kind of works, right? So we'll go. something like that to turn it back around. So just having it unfold, you know, while we're working through this, I haven't done this kind of lesson before, so I'm, so it's fun to, to give it a shot and um, I'll do a lot more of these um, to continue this creative process and, and show you how composing through entire song forms, um, how I think of it anyway. So I, I like that I'll do the melody one more time by itself. Whoops. And second time. Okay, I just like that there because we're leading into something. And then we're going to go into the chorus after that. Okay, we're going to see how this all comes. We'll put it all together in like a little demo. All the layers singing along and everything at the end of this video. Here's the chorus. The chorus progression is the same as we did in the intro. E flat major, B flat major, E flat major. And in the previous video, we mapped out what everything is. So this is the flat six major seven chord of the key. This is the flat three major seven chord of the key. We're still just in you know, thinking of chord options in G minor. Now we've done so much stuff, especially in that last section where the harmony was crazy. And I just kind of want like a poppy, simple, catchy, fun thing here that we kind of like created all this tension, all this minor feel, all this little bit of going out of the key, and we just land on these two major chords. And when this progression exists, I'm I'm always really aware of just the, the motion between the half step motions that exist between them. So just that motion. Very poppy, right? So I kind of want to just go towards something like that. Notice how little information, it's not about using everything we know. It's about really feeling, do I need, do I want this to be simple and catchy? And the feel and the rhythm kind of make it, make it feel good at that point. Okay, let's do something a little different so it's not only that. Then there's a little variety to it. Now, if you're if you caught that, that's from the beginning too. That was from the intro. So it's really nice there. And that same line works over D dominant seven, which brings us back to the second verse. Okay, so a lot of material there, but I hope you're seeing how we're doing so much more than just practicing the types of exercises that I've taught on this channel for years, which is like, check out how this technique works or check out how this chord functions or check out the theory behind this or how to improvise this or how to map out all this stuff. Well, we're doing something that has way more life to it. It has way more character to it. It has um, a journey. There's a story unfolding, right? Because we're actually going from section to section and there's a feeling when it changes. And so this is really fun to start doing this, saying, well, I've taught all this stuff. What, what should I teach now? Let's, let's put it all together and be creative with it. So we got back to 
the second verse, let's just say we're going to use the same material in the second verse. We're, it's going to play, do the chorus again. It's going to do, or it's going to do the pre-chorus again, and then it's going to do the chorus again. And then we did write a bridge. We had a bridge, um, and I went over the song form in the last video. But the uh, the bridge was this. One chord, flat six major, flat seven major, one, and just kind of... Let's just say we're not going to write anything over that. It'll just be like this instrumental groove thing. And really this top thing can just be the melody that comes out from the voicings. <laughs> shouldn't try to sing it along so often. So we'll just say that's good as it is. Song intro we, we did, the verse we did, the pre-chorus, the chorus. Um, and for the chorus, let's add... that intro material into the chorus too, because those are the same chord progression. So then it adds this extra layer of energy and it'll do, we'll, we'll do that. Um, so those are all the sections. Um, if we follow everything we just wrote, put it through the song form that we mapped out last time, which is gonna be intro, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, chorus. Um, and we throw some lyrics on it and just kind of add the layers. It's a complete song. So I'm not saying it's good or bad or, you know, it just is the process of us having come up with a song. So I, I am going to throw lyrics on it and it's not about lyrics. I'll just make up whatever comes to mind. I like to do this. Um, there's a book called Writing Better Lyrics by Pat Patterson. And uh, in that book, in the early part of that book, he talks about um, trying to get to your lyrical material as quickly as possible as an exercise, as a regular exercise, like spend 10 minutes going as quickly as you can into finding something that feels good and then cutting it off because you need to practice getting to it quickly. I would say that's the same thing we've, we're doing with music and guitar vocabulary um, where we want to know all this stuff. So how quickly can we get to something that we like? And I already mentioned earlier in the video, I can get to something I like very quickly and kind of endlessly because I have all the options mapped out because I like to practice that stuff. So with lyrics too, it's fun to just say, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Like, is that okay? Does it work? And just kind of go really intuitively. You can always improve it later or, you know, do multiple, multiple drafts. But this is just something that I've found helpful working on lyrics, which is not something I'm trained on or anything like that, but I love to do it and just kind of finding something quickly that comes to mind. Sometimes I'll just go with that as a practice. And then later when it really counts or when I'm like, oh, I really want this song to be, you know, a real song that I care about then it's a lot easier to find the meaningful the meaningful stuff. But what's fun about doing this video and the series of videos about songs is that um, I'm trying to just have it be fun, right? This is, it's not about some, I'm not going to promote the song or have it be uh, something officially released or anything. So it, we just get to have fun with seeing how it all turns out. Let's do it. I'll throw some lyrics on. You'll hear the exact melodies that we composed, the lead lines, and I'll just play through that whole thing with the song, uh, the whole song fleshed out with some bass and drums as well. Check it out, here it is. Why we gotta disagree about such obvious stuff that doesn't matter so much? Well, maybe I could try to meet with you and maybe A spider caught in its own web. I don't really want to be an enemy, or so they say, or so they said. So, can we make it work? Let's try to make it work. Let's try to make it try to work. Let's try to make it work. Let's try to make it work. Happen in a natural way And I must admit that I was into that But something must have happened Cause I can't get it back well It's a dilemma Like a spider caught in its own web I don't really want to be an enemy Or so they say Or so they said So can we make it work? Let's try to make it
I mentioned earlier that I see the chord tones of each chord, you know, really clearly, like instantly, anywhere on the neck. And that is what allows me to find those, you know, quote unquote, good notes and then play around them to find something I like without fussing, you know, without any delay, starting to get to these ideas to, you know, get the creative stuff happening. Um, I mapped out all my chord tones of all my chords all over the guitar. And to do that, I used you know, a resource that I made for myself that you can get as well, which is my chord tone vocabulary pack. It shows 12 different chord types and the, all the positions of each of those chord types, all the shapes you need to be able to drill them. And so you could use those exact shapes to improvise over any chord progression with chord tones or you know compose with it or whatever you want. That's my chord tone vocabulary pack. You can get it for free with the link in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones. It's really handy if you're into working on that stuff. I hope you will grab it and benefit from it. I post a new lesson video every week. Next week's lesson, I'm going to start a new song from scratch and do the same process again. Just something new that I'm doing that I'm inspired to do. The first lesson of this year, two videos ago, I talked about reflecting on our goals and, um, you know, asking ourselves some questions for what we want out of our music time. And mine was m very creative and songwriting focused. And so I'm doing a, a series of lesson videos on songwriting process, just like the last couple that I did here and this one. So if you're into that, I hope you will follow along and I hope to see you in that video next week. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.